you're listening to another episode of Popcorn Podcast with Lee and Tim, where we're discussing Mafia Mama with all the latest movie and trailer news. Plus, we have some special announcements, so make sure you stick around for them. I'm Timmy Fland, movie buff. And I'm Lee Livingstone, entertainment journalist. And we love to talk all things movies. Now, in Mafia Mama, an American mum inherits her Mafia Don grandfather's empire in Italy. Guided by the firm's advisor, she hilariously defies everyone's expectations as the new head of the family business. Mafia Mama is directed by Catherine Hardwick of Twilight and 13 fame. From a screenplay by Michael J. Feldman, Debbie June, based on an original story by Amanda Sthurs. Mafia Mama stars Australia's Tony Collette, Monica Bellucci, Sophie Nomvet, Eduardo Scarpetta, Giulio Corso, Francesco Mastriani, and Alfonso Perugini. All right, Tim, let's jump into Mafia Mama. If we must. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> we're off and running already. We're off and running. This film, as an overall umbrella statement, leans heavily on that old trope of an annoying American fish out of water in a foreign country ticking off all the locals, doesn't it? <laughs> the operative word. Being annoying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? Oh. How can Tony Collette ever be annoying? Though? Well, see, this is the thing. It has pained me preparing my thoughts for this film because we love and adore and honor Tony Collette yes. as an actress. Her filmography is astonishing. It she is. is one of a kind. But no one in their right mind could ever convince me as to how or why Tony Collette saw anything in Mafia Mama and went, I'm going to make that movie. <laughs> Not anything at all? Nothing. Wow. Okay. Well, oh. look, it went to all the expected places in the story. I could have oh, told yeah. you exactly all the beats this film would hit before mm. I even sat down yeah, in the you, cinema. You have a knack for that anyway, well, but this is so blatantly <laughs> yeah. cliched by the book. But does that mean it's not enjoyable in places? Oh, I couldn't stand this film. It's very formulaic. It's, you know, an empty nester looking for her purpose in life. She's a pushover, people pleaser personality who gets trampled on by her husband and her employer. She's very underappreciated. And, of course, she goes on to find her inner strength and passion again with some unexpected romance thrown in for good measure. Yeah. It just it hits all those beats that you expect it to hit. Tonally, mm. I feel that this movie doesn't know what it is. Yeah, tonally, it's a uh, soup. It is a soup. It's a bit unusual because it's a comedy. It's billed as a comedy. And there are some funny moments. I laughed. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I laughed at. I laughed at. No, I laughed. There were some I'm funny moments. I'm glad you found it funny. Oh, look, I wasn't rolling around on the floor. Let's just chill out <laughs> for a second. It is a comedy. Mm. But there's also a lot of violence and gore, like some serious body horror in yeah. this film. I was not expecting that at all. No. Some gory eyeballs being pulled out of sockets with a high heel. Or oh, <laughs> you're about oh, to bomb. <laughs> That was that was a look away from the screen moment. But the thing was with the violence, mm. it was there unexpectedly and it was intense. It was visceral almost. But it never ended as well. Like we saw that stiletto in the eyeball <laughs> over and over and over. And when that happens, you know, you have the initial reaction of, holy shit, what did I just see? Mm. Whoa, that was like kind of cool uh, in how that happened. But then when they keep showing it to yeah. you, it loses its impact and it just becomes, can we please end this? Yeah, there are some odd creative choices from the filmmakers mm. in this film. Another one that I want to point out is the slow motion walk away from gunfire and explosions, right? Which... <laughs> In a film, when they do that, you know, the cool guys don't look at explosions bit. Mm. When they do that, it's usually this big come into their own kind of moment. But this is yeah. right at the beginning of the movie when she's freaking out because she's just been thrown into the middle of this gang war. Mm. And they all walk away in slow motion. And I, I didn't understand. It's before yeah. Colette's character had even earned her stripes as a badass. Mm. And it maybe have been played that way for comic value, but it didn't land right. Yeah, this is the problem of this movie. No matter what sort of genre or tone that it's trying to dabble in at any given goddamn scene, it never lands it. It just becomes so jarring and left of centre that you don't understand how they landed on that piece of dialogue or that action from the character or that creative choice, that slow motion that just seems so out of kilter mm. and out of place for what's just happened. 
and nothing works. Nothing, nothing works in this movie. The movie is so lost and stumbles through its own plot as much as Tony Collette's character is just trying to figure out what the hell's going on through her insufferable naivety. I'm going to disagree with you slightly. I'll play devil's advocate for a second because Please do. you have these strong female characters at the centre of the story who bond with each other sort of against the men mm-hmm. rather than being in competition with each other. Which I, I liked that yeah. part of the film. It's a nice undertone mm. to the film. Mm. It's very subtle though. Mm-hmm. A lot of the angles that they, they could have pushed a bit further are very subtle and it mm-hmm. doesn't quite dive into any of them effectively. I didn't think the story empowered Tony Collette's character though because she just came out as so unaware and oblivious mm. to the scenario that she so ridiculously found herself in. She was more looking for the – oh, I can't believe I'm going to say these words. She was more looking for the eat, pray, fuck of the whole experience <laughs> than the fact that she's been thrust into leading this Italian mafia family. She's more worried about that mm. handsome Italian that she just randomly met at the airport. Not just one handsome Italian. Like, she's a horny devil. Like and she's, she's out for it. We, we should Good encourage – yeah, she's <laughs> – recently separated from her husband in this movie who's an absolute fucking drop kick he's like a, a husband that was written in a 90s screenplay yes. like he just feels so out of place in this he's world so dopey so dopey so one-dimensional yeah but um you know we should be as celebrating her sexual empowerment but it mm. just becomes really awkward because it's almost like do you do you have any peripheral vision about what's going on here <laughs> it just plays into the tone and the type of movie that they're trying to make multiple times Mm. (laughs) it's the one movie they're trying to make three or four at once yeah she's going over there for her grandfather's funeral that's Mm. the pretense that gets her over there who she doesn't know but she's just more worried about getting laid yeah like even in that circumstance even if you take away all the mafia family inheritance and all that kind of thing Mm. it's a weird thing to go over for your grandfather's funeral and be worried about getting laid yeah i just want to get boinked (laughs) (laughs) boink boink (laughs) It is a delight to watch Tony Collette work, though. Come on. Nah. Not in this film? No. Nah. Always Mm. for me. Always for me. I want to hear what you enjoyed about her performance. She's just such a natural. She's so talented. Mm. And it's nice to see her in this slightly sexy role of an older woman finding her spark and purpose and desire again. But they, yeah, the writing of it doesn't delve into it enough. I think there's one scene in a courtroom where she does her whole monologue bit and it's, you know, I was looking for something. I was looking for purpose and I found me. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. I paraphrase. But she still, she delivers it. It's believable when she delivers it. I, I just think she's so over the top and overzealous. It brings you out of what could actually be a real scenario. I'm not sure we can be friends over this point, Tim. Like, what? I don't want it to end this way, Lee. <laughs> I, this is really painful for over me to Tony say. Over Tony Collette's performance. Over Tony Collette's performance because she can almost do no wrong until she starred in Mafia Mama. Oh, Tim. Mm. Mm. I do want her entire Italian wardrobe, though. She did look fabulous. If I can be a bit superficial for Why a second. Not? Costume designer Claudette Lilly did a fantastic job. She mm. looked incredible. Yeah, she did. She looked amazing. And I loved the action sequences that they gave her. I wish they could have given her more of that. Yes. She didn't have enough time, I guess, to, to marinate into what that role was. And I think that we could have seen more of an arc for her. As a character, she could have become a little more badass. She could have got a bit more of her hands dirty because she literally is stumbling through accidentally killing people in this movie. (laughs) She's the nice person. She's the nice girl and she's trying to hold on to that. I think that's what her character is about. Mm. Even in this cutthroat world of mafia wars, she Mm. still wants to be nice. Yeah, she's the people pleaser of the piece. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess, well, her character finds that her talents are appreciated over there. And like herself, she can take the family business to a new beginning. And throughout that, she's balancing that being kind with leading a ruthless mafia empire. But what you're saying, what I understand you're saying, Mm -hmm. is that you wanted her to be a bit more ruthless. I wanted to see her actually click into the role. I wanted to see that sort of, that Mm. change, that real big shift But she just seemed forever naive and oblivious to the task at hand and, again, competing with what type of movie it was trying to make. But there was one thing that I was 
absolutely impressed about her performance. I have to call it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of positivity over here. She is the fastest woman on stairs that ever did leave. (laughs) Yes, we have to talk about this. Oh, my God. We have to talk about this, okay, because the spatial awareness I know is your big thing. Just not. I I physically jolted in these. (laughs) It's just like, what just happened? Yeah, okay, so to explain, there there are a couple of moments like that in the film. There was another one which I didn't write down, but there Mm -hmm. was another one. But Mm -hmm. then that moment on the stairs – it felt like something out of Twilight, out of Catherine Hardwick's yes, Twilight. Yes, the director of the film. Yeah, where they were in one place <laughs> and suddenly in another. It wasn't a natural trick of editing. No, it wasn't like it to feels, show a pa- passage of time. No, it feels like something went wrong in the editing because she literally stepped on the step and then was all of a sudden punching a guy in the face at the top of the at stairs. The top. And you're like, what? But then the thing is, this is why I don't know what how this happened, how this made it through. Print, print, it's done. <laughs> because... It happens when she's coming down the stairs again too. It doesn't happen (laughs) once. It happens twice. And I'm like, how? You're not pulling the wool over our eyes here. She's not (laughs) sliding down a fireman pole here. She's meant to be walking down stairs in stilettos in an instant. Nah. Yeah, I mean, you can do it quickly and speed it up a bit. If you fall down. No, no, but (laughs) yeah, it's hard to explain because there's ways that you can do that without showing someone walking up an entire staircase. Yes. But something about it didn't land right and was it Mm -mm. poor editing or is it that maybe Hardwick can't let go of her super speedy vampires (laughs) she was like I just want to take myself back to that baseball (laughs) game in Twilight when they're all running through the woods catching them balls all right spider monkey (laughs) let's talk about Monica Bellucci that you cannot say a bad word about Monica Bellucci she was just fabulous in this yes but it took me like the whole movie to figure out who she actually was. <laughs> right. She was just this random woman giving advice and having that great friendship and connection yeah. with Tony Collette's character, which you alluded to before, is a really great relationship to see on mm. screen. But I was like, who is this woman? <laughs> who is she to the family, <laughs> to the mafia? She's an advisor. She's yeah. a consigliere or whatever you call them. She clearly would have been able to tackle the gig way more successfully yeah. than <laughs> she, Kristen. She should have been doing it, but she can't because she's not a member of the family per se. She's loyal and supportive. And I enjoyed in her performance that her character is quite tough, but Mm -hmm. she's also warm and friendly and supportive. Yeah, she has empathy towards Kristen Mm. and her plight and she wants her to succeed, which was great about women empowering and championing women Yeah, because arguably everyone in this film have their own agenda in their sights. They're very Mm. selfish and a lot of them are stupid. Yeah, the cousin's just in no position to take over at all. He's a psycho. He's a literal psychopath, (laughs) (laughs) yes. I want to talk about Kristen's bodyguards for a second because they're quite fun supporting characters, Dante and Aldo. Mm. They're a lot of fun. She forms a friendship with them and they protect her to varying degrees of success. I would have liked to have seen more. Of them. Yeah, I feel like they were given a lot of improvisational liberty. I just got that vibe that the the pair playing the bodyguards would just do your own thing. <laughs> what, was it cliche? Yes. Was it dumb? Yes. But it, I agree it was quite fun to watch them play out and do fun things. I want to test your temperature on, on something, okay? Because <laughs> it's the hot. Se- <laughs> It's spicy. It's spicy. It's salty. Salty. Uh, so the sequences that are the most fun to watch for me are when Kristen's interacting with other mob bosses and you don't know whether they're going to kill each other or sleep together. <laughs> and the sexual and the psychological tension I thought played out okay, played out well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me get your thoughts on that real quick. Look, I love me a bit of like – sexy action in a movie and the context of that was fabulous because they're having this really exclusive meal and there's wine involved and these beautiful you know 400 year old villas beautiful decor around so and she's in this fabulous outfit and you know she doesn't know what she's doing and they think something's happening and it's just I I like that dynamic and that was quite fun to watch but then again it's just Utter plot, dialogue, story, chaos <laughs> surrounding it. Okay. There's a few nods to The Godfather, obviously, as well, sprinkled throughout the score mm. and the visuals. Uh, you know, oranges spilling down an Italian street and, and that kind of thing. I mean, you expect that, don't you? Because yeah. this is basically gender flipped The Godfather. Totally. And, the, <laughs> and, and with, <laughs> with more comedy. With, uh, yeah, a little more comedy and sprinkles of stupidity in there. Uh, but they do refer to The Godfather quite blatantly mm. in, in the script. Uh, throughout the film too. So you can't escape it. It's shot entirely in Rome, 
on location. Mm. Beautiful location. Yeah, All really nice. Gorgeous manors with like ivy crawling up the side and lavender fields and mm. all the other Italian countryside. Maybe you want to go to Italy. I want to go to Italy. Close your eyes, manifest Italy, Italy. Did you take that from the film at least? Oh, yeah. I, I like Italy. I'd go there. <laughs> I, despite I, I, this movie? Despite this movie, yeah. It didn't turn me off Rome whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. Impossible. We've spoken a little bit about the action and the violence. It's yeah, some big body horror in there that made me feel a bit squeamish. Yeah, and it was it was quite unrelenting. One of the things though, because it went to that place of body horror and mm. gore unexpectedly, there was a scene right at the end of the film. I'm not going to spoil what it was, but it was set up to be incredibly gruesome. Mm. We're talking in the winery, right? Yes, and they didn't show any of it. And I thought, but you've made a point of showing us yeah. really horrific things all the way through the movie that's taken you out of the piece, for me anyway, yeah. in terms of what sort of film they were trying to make. And then I was like, I was ready for this. I was like, yeah, fuck it. Show me. <laughs> Just <laughs> show go, me. do your yeah. worst. And nothing. And Th- I was they like, were like, this is where we draw the line. This is where, they, this is where <laughs> we draw the line in the budget because <laughs> we ran out. <laughs> that's what it said to me. They couldn't right. afford it. That's oh. what it said. Well, I think we've run out of steam on this uh, (laughs) review too. Shall we wrap up Mafia Mama? Yeah, let's do it. So, Lee, it pains me to pair the name Tony Collette with the worst film of the year, but that's Mafia Mama for me. A horrendously written and realised film that had me utterly bamboozled from start to finish. A textbook example in conflicting tones, incoherent writing and jarring characters and performances. You all seem to be working off different versions of the script to one another. This is a stupid chaotic and unfunny disaster of a film that will leave you perplexed as to what Tony Collette saw in the script outside of a free trip to Italy. It's eat, pray, avoid for me. I'm going to rate Mafia Mama 1 Popcorn Colonel. There's some big calls there, (laughs) Tim. Wow, okay. While Mafia Mama has its moments and the heavy-hitting star power of Collette and Bellucci It is largely underwhelming. A few laughs here and there, some subtle feminist twists aren't enough to make it a memorable trip to the movies. There is an audience for this, though, and if you're at a crossroads in your life or looking for the light version of Eat, Pray, Love, this might just be the film for you. I'm going to give Mafia Mama two popcorn kernels out of five. There you go. Look, I'm sure you're right that there is an audience out there for this movie and I wish them well and I hope they do (laughs) it. (laughs) do <laughs> enjoy it. Well, Mafia Mama is in Australian cinemas from April 13. All right, Tim, on to the news. At Star Wars Celebration 2023 in London recently, President of Lucasfilm Kathleen Kennedy made big cinematic announcements about three new films set in the past, present and future of the Star Wars galaxy. We've been waiting for announcements like and this. And this isn't even the Taika Waititi films. Yeah, that's still happening in the background. Oh, bring it on. So the expected movies are set to be directed by Logan and Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny filmmaker James Mangold, the Mandalorian co-creator David Filoni and Ms. Marvel director Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy. Yeah, so Mangold's film will turn back the clock 25,000 years to focus on the discovery of the Force, Mm. while Filoni's will tie into the New Republic era that he's currently exploring in The Mandalorian, and Obeyed Chinoy's will take place 15 years after the rise of Skywalker and feature a familiar face. A familiar face indeed. This just got us cheering this week when it was announced. Daisy Ridley will return as Rey to build a new Jedi Order. How exciting. So exciting. So good. You know, all these filmmakers really excite me. There's some people Mm. ingrained within the Star Wars lore and then you have great filmmakers like James Mangold who I just can't wait to see how Mm. he moulds a a Star Wars story for us. Well, yeah, James Mangold, as we said, of Logan fame Mm. and we're going to see what he's going to do in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So soon, so, so soon. So, okay, Dwayne Johnson released 
released a sun-soaked beachside video featuring his daughters at the Disney shareholders meeting recently, announcing that he will return to the role of demigod Maui in a live-action remake of Moana. Hmm, many, many thoughts. So, Disney animation Moana was released only in 2016, taking inspiration from Polynesian myths and told the story of a young woman who goes on a quest to reunite a mystical relic with its owner, a goddess named Tefiti. Along the way, she releases Maui from his island prison and finds the strength to become the chief her father believed she could be. So, naturally, we have some thoughts about this because it's mm. only been less than seven years yeah. since Moana, the animation, was released. Mm. Why are they jumping on this train so quickly? Oh, I don't know. Are, are Disney thinking they're running out of animated movies to remake? What I think it is is Dwayne Johnson likes to bet on a sure thing. Mm-hmm. And the success of Moana was incredible. Huge. Rightly so. Yeah. So he needs a sure thing, especially after the performance of Black Adam. Yeah, what performance? <laughs> so he's jumping on it, but I, I think there's a bit of backlash from the fandom on this because it's it's so soon. So is Dwayne Johnson the only one reprising his role at this point? At this point, he's the only one that's confirmed. Auli mm. Cravalo is a producer on the film okay. with Dwayne Johnson. I'm not sure whether she's maybe a little bit old to step into the role now. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I just find it really bizarre. I I would love if she took the role because I think she's about 16. Yeah. And her voice is incredible. It's amazing. It would be great to see her paired up with Dwayne Johnson again in this context. Mm. So, fingers crossed. We shall see. Mm -hmm. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny dropped a new action-packed trailer this week. Mm -hmm. And it was announced to have its world premiere out of competition at Cannes Film Festival on May 18. With the festival also intending to pay special tribute to everyone's favourite grumpy uncle, (laughs) Harrison Ford. (laughs) I love that title for him. So the new trailer gives us more insight into Indy's current life and plans to retire before his goddaughter, played by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, ropes him into helping her find a world-changing artefact from the past. So this long-anticipated sequel and fifth and final instalment in Indy's adventures will be in Australian cinemas on June 28th. So we're going to have to suffer like a month and a half of torture after it <laughs> after it was revealed at Cannes and everyone starts talking about it yeah all the initial reactions we're just gonna we're gonna be like i want to see it i want to see it i'm gonna have to try and avoid it what did you think of the trailer oh i loved it yeah i'm getting like classic indie vibes from this yeah yeah how about you successful yeah i'm really excited to see it oh my god Okay, so speaking of new trailers, we got some more glimpses into big upcoming movies this week, including a longer Barbie trailer, a first look at DC's Blue Beetle movie, and teaser for Marvel's The Marvels. Say that three times fast. (laughs) I challenge you. All right, but let's kick off with Barbie Mm -hmm. and the opening moment of the trailer that absolutely broke the internet. I played it so many times. (laughs) So the frame focuses on Barbie's feet as she steps out of her high-heeled shoe and her foot stays in that iconic doll shape of being up on the ball of your tiptoe permanently. Yeah. How cool what was that? What sort of fucking <laughs> trickery is this? How do you reckon they did it? They're nailing the marketing of this film. I swear they're it's nailing so good. it. It's so good. Yeah. And then we get to see in the trailer more of the inhabitants of Barbie Land where a fight breaks out on the beach between all these Kens <laughs> yeah. uh, before Margot Robbie's Barbie and Ryan Gosling's Ken travel to the real world. Yeah, they're going to beach you off. (laughs) (laughs) It shouldn't be that funny, funny, but it is. (laughs) But it is. So we can't wait to see Greta Gerwig's Barbie in Australian cinemas uh, from July 20. Yes, Lee? There's also that moment in the trailer where um, it's very innocent and and quite funny where Ken goes, I'm going to stay over tonight. And Barbie's like, okay, (laughs) what are we going to do? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know what we do. (laughs) So we good. mash our smooth body parts together like Barbie and Ken yeah. dolls. On our tippy toes. <laughs> <laughs> smash them together. Wasn't that what you used to do when yeah. you were a kid? <laughs> Is that you trying to smash some dolls that, together? That's me trying to smash some dolls together. Oh, God, please move on to Blue Beetle. Okay, we <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Starring Cholo Maraduena in the title role and as his alter ego, now, this is how they say in the trailer. I want to say Jamie Ray's, but mm-hmm. I'm so Anglo-Saxon, it's not funny. Um, <laughs> I think they say in the trailer, Jamie Reyes. We'll go with that. So the story follows a recent college graduate who returns home full of aspirations for his future as he searches for purpose 
fate intervenes when Jamie finds himself in possession of an ancient relic of alien biotechnology, the scarab. We're going for full white people and just calling him Jamie, are we? <laughs> Is that disrespectful? That's just what I decided to do. <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> so the trailer shows how the scarab bestows him with a suit of armour capable of unpredictable powers and changes him into the superhero Blue Beetle. This has been a hyped up movie, of course, an integral part of James Gunn and James Safran's new vision for DC. But what did you take out for this trailer? I felt it was a little formulaic. Mm -hmm. I wasn't very excited by it, unfortunately. I love the actor in this. He's Mm -hmm. he's great in um, the revival of Karate Kid. Oh, yeah. What's it called? For Cobra Netflix. Kai. Cobra Kai, yeah. For the Netflix. For the Netflix. For the Netflixes. <laughs> yeah, he's really, really great in that. I like him as an actor. I'm just, in terms of the story and where they're going to go with this, it's going to be very Spider-Man-ish where it's like, oh, look at this new mm. suit. I can't control. I have to somehow figure out how to control it while it controls me. And Yeah, yeah. same, same. It's just yeah. that it's more blue. Yeah, and it's a character that we haven't really seen on film Ever. or in shows. Yeah, I, I had never heard of Blue Beetle until it was announced, you know, a year mm. or so ago. I am intrigued enough by what the trailer delivered. It looks pretty action-packed and interesting from that perspective. Yeah. So we'll see what we get delivered. Well, there's no hiding the fact that I'm more excited about this one. Last but definitely not least, let's touch on the Marvels teaser. So the film is due to arrive in cinemas in November and sees Brie Larson reprise her role of Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Carol Danvers, joined by Tayona Paris as Monica Rambo, whose adult version was introduced in the Disney Plus series WandaVision back in 2021, Mm. and Ms. Marvel series star Imam Velani as Kamala Khan. Yeah, so the clip that we saw shows a Freaky Friday-style swap as all three of these heroes and their powers get entangled with one another. Because I think all their powers came from the same sort of source, didn't they? Yeah, unclear for yeah. me at this point, but I think you're right. But it causes all sorts of chaos, of mm-hmm. course, and then they have to work together to become a reluctant team in fighting the next cosmic threat on the universe. I mean, never mind the fact Captain Marvel is the most powerful <laughs> superhero yeah. we've seen in the Marvel Universe, like by herself. Yes. But yeah, sure, she needs some help. Well, she's the r- reluctant hero who doesn't want to be teamed Maybe. up according to the trailer. Mm. She's like, we're not a team. Do you know what I'm interested in? I'm really interested in seeing how they address whether Monica Rambo and Captain Marvel have been in touch since she was a kid. Because remember she flew off when she was a kid? Yeah. Captain Trouble. Oh, when she calls her Captain Trouble, I'm going to be like, <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see whether they explore whether they've been in touch or mm. whether it's been years and she has to explain why she hasn't been in touch. Well, I mean, I feel like... <laughs> To Marvel, Carol Danvers, all she's done in the MCU is explain where she's been all these years. Right. Like, where have you been? Where have you been? Where have you been? <laughs> we'll, we'll move on from that eventually. There's a lot of uh, universes out there that don't have their own Avengers. Yeah. Well, go on. See how long that one sticks. Yeah. Well, Nia DaCosta directs The Marvels, a sequel to 2019's Captain Marvel. The film will directly follow the events of the post credit scene from the Ms. Marvel TV series. Which is basically more of what we saw in the trailer. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Ty West and Mia Goth are at it again with Maxine, the third and final film in their Twisted Horror trilogy. The cast has been revealed, I believe, and yes. filming has begun. It has. So the first in the trilogy X was released in early 2022 and almost immediately received a follow-up prequel titled Pearl about the original film's villain. Yeah, these films have come out fairly quickly in succession. Yeah, well, they filmed X and Pearl back-to-back. Right. Hence why the release happened so close to each other. But Pearl is the prequel. Pearl is the prequel, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So the first film introduced the titular Maxine Minx, an adult film actress who wants to be a star. Without spoiling it for you guys, the end of X suggests there's a lot more to Maxine that audiences have yet to learn, which the prequel divulges. Yes, I am dying to see the prequel. I've seen X and absolutely loved it. So I'm so excited that there's another film in the works here. Yeah, along with Mia Goth returning to her claimed role as Maxine, there's quite a cast joining her. Huge. Got Australia's own Elizabeth Debicki, Giancarlo Esposito, Michelle Monaghan, Lily Collins, Bobby Cannavale, Moses Sumney, Halsey and Kevin Bacon. I mean, just throw a bit of bacon into the pan. (laughs) You've got a cast. Yeah. (laughs) It's so exciting. (laughs) 
Well, there's no word on a release date just yet, but it's likely to hit cinemas probably in early 2024, I reckon. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Get them out, Ty West. That's right. Okay, friends, before we sign off for this episode, we have not one part, but a two-part announcement to share with you, which is pretty exciting. Dun, dun, dun. Over to you, my friend. Well, there is a new kernel about to pop into the Popcorn Podcast family as my husband and I welcome a baby with <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Timmy. <laughs> so excited. We're so excited for the new arrival and what's ahead, obviously. But this means that, sadly, I will be stepping away from Popcorn Podcast for just a little while as we focus on the new addition in our lives. My gosh, my friend, I... I'm just so <laughs> I'm just so excited for you in general. I'm really excited that you're sharing this news with our listeners as well. I feel like I've known for so long because I, yeah. I kind of have. I mean, some people might have noticed in our photos from premieres that yeah. I was starting to get a bit chunky. Because I was saying, I've been saying to Lee when we've been going to these screens, I'm like, look, you can't really hide it very successfully anymore. So, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's time to share. Time to share. But this wonderful news, friends, doesn't mean the end of Popcorn Podcast. No, we will still bring you bite-sized and sometimes salty movie reviews and interviews throughout the year with an exciting spin-off series. That's right. It's so important to us to keep you informed about what to see in cinemas, what to spend your hard-earned cash on because it ain't cheap going to the cinemas. Nope. But it's so worth it because we can share in the joy of movies and there are some absolutely huge films releasing in the coming months. So, Tim, please tell our lovely listeners what you have in store for them. Well, with Lee on maternity leave, I will keep the lights on with a spin-off called Popcorn Pals, uh, where I'll be joined by some very special guest hosts to dive into all the latest cinema releases with these expert podcast pals of ours. Yeah, there's an absolutely stellar lineup of incredible guests from around the world joining Tim, who will share their take on the movies we're all so excited to see this year. So with their unique perspectives and insights, it's going to be so fun to chat all things movies and explore the experiences we all have when those lights dim in the theatre and we're all transported to a whole new world. And look, I'm not going to be able to stay away. Maybe I'll pop in for one or two along the way. <laughs> Please do. There's so much coming out that I want to see. I'm going to be like, here, take the baby. I'm going to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> because we've talked about this and now we can actually like share a little bit more. Yeah. We've, we've been talking about Lee's return, you know, to the podcast or to movies, like yeah. getting out and, and seeing all these crazy titles coming out. And one of the questions that I asked was, will you go to like Babes in Arms sessions? Yes. Now, can you explain to a <laughs> listener who may not know what a Babes in Arms is? Oh, yeah. Well, a Babes in Arms session is when you can take your kid mm -hmm. to the movie. So there's lots of kids running around. And my first reaction to that was a very visceral, hell <laughs> no. Hell no. <laughs> No disrespect to those sessions. It's wonderful to get mums out of the house and be able to go and see a movie. But I just need that darkened cinema and yeah. quiet to enjoy and get completely immersed. And if I have to look after a kid running around, I yeah, don't think no, no. I'm going to enjoy it. This is my time, baby. <laughs> exactly. This is my time. Because the lights aren't fully off. No. And the sound, I believe, isn't as loud. No, yeah. So, and of course, you just then have the disruption of bebes talking yeah. and screaming lots and running and lots around. Lots of babies, yeah. So that's fine. You can come along to a screening whenever you can <laughs> with me. Yes, yes, I will be. Don't worry. <laughs> so it's time to wish Lee and her family all the very best for such an exciting chapter in their lives. And we will miss you so, so, Aww. so much. I'm, I'm trying not to get emotional. <laughs> I'm going to miss all of you. Oh, gosh. It's not going to be the same. But we will be back. Friends, we yes. will be back as a duo later this year. So watch this space for Lee's return. You can't keep me away. And that's it for another episode of Popcorn Podcast. We covered Mafia Mama, which is in Australian cinemas from April 13. And as always, friends, thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time. One last time. We have one for more. For me. Yeah, one more. For me, but one not for you. Do. Not for me. I'll be hanging around. Can't get rid of me. <laughs> We are now on YouTube, guys, where you will find our latest celebrity video interviews. Simply search Popcorn Podcast with Lee and Tim and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single one. <laughs>